Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. A Ripple employee smashes a delusional XRP hater with pure facts and logic. And, and, and by the way, the, the smashing was done to somebody with a massive following. And it, it's so fascinating to me how some of these, these Bitcoin maxis out there, these XRP haters, they, they just, they don't seem to care about reality. They don't seem to care about facts at, at all. They just, they feel things and that's their position and damn it, they're gonna stick to it. And, and so these videos are among my very favorite types of videos to make all up on the Moon Lambeau channel right here because it's an opportunity for me to tell a uh, state publicly why uh, why these people are wrong. Just, I just, I wanna tell someone they're wrong, that's it. <laughs> There's, there's some amount of truth to that. I'm saying it in a, a, an intentionally ridiculous way. But um, I actually really do enjoy debate. I think it's a lot of fun. And, and, and I'm not talking about screaming matches. I'm not talking about arguments. There's a difference between arguments and debate. Let me assure you. I'm talking about having a thoughtful conversation. If I can have a thoughtful conversation with somebody I actually disagree with, but uh, emotion doesn't get involved and we can just state facts and why we believe what we believe. And just if it's two people just seeking to actually get to the truth, not just to defend their position, but to genuinely share the, the, the rationale for why they believe what they believe, like that, that, that's actual intellectual curiosity. That's healthy. That's good. That's why I like debate. But I want to be clear, the, the debate and arguments are uh, very different. And then you have to ask yourself again, are, are you engaging with somebody that's being intellectually honest? And in the case here, I, I'm not so sure that's the case here. I, 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 because it couldn't be more clear. The state of XRP, what it is... Uh, wh where it comes from, what decentralization versus centralization is, which is at the heart of what's being discussed here, it's so obvious. So anyway, I'm going to have a fun, fun time breaking this down and sharing with you the specifics. Um, but before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos all up on the internet. Uh, but uh, about crypto related stories, but just as a hobby and, and just for fun. Just want to be clear about that. I don't want anyone to think that I'm pretending to be some sort of guru. There's enough fake internet gurus uh, all over the place. Uh, I'm certainly not one of them. I, I, I proudly state that I'm just a dude. I think it's empowering to acknowledge that uh, you don't need a, a crazy financial background to accumulate life changing wealth investing. I, I firmly believe that. I think that's empowering and not enough people are saying that. And you don't have to chase after these these fake internet, a lot of them are fake anyway, not all of them, and then pay them a bunch of money for courses. Just understand some basic things, uh, have, have serious discipline, control your emotion, and you're in control of your financial future. I, I firmly believe that. There's nothing special about me. I, I'm not going to be selling you a course or anything. There's, I have nothing to sell. I just I just think it's genuinely interesting and very important. There's just an incredible opportunity in crypto right now. Once in a species opportunity. Not once in a generation, once in a species. A shout out to Frecky who shared this thread with me. Um, I really appreciate it, Frecky. I had a good time reading through this and I'm glad I finally get to talk about it. Because I actually first read this yesterday. I've been looking forward to making this video ever since. <laughs> I really have. And so th this uh, this starts from somebody named Da Vinci Jeremy, who has a massive following. On Twitter, you can see here, he has a, a 242,000 followers. And on YouTube, 289,000 subscribers. And so credit where it's due, uh, people find what you're putting out to be appealing, obviously, or you wouldn't have the following that you do. But uh, Da Vinci, I respectfully state, you are wrong on what you're saying about Ripple and XRP. And it seems like a disservice to those people that respect and follow you. And I, I just, I, it's at the point where, because I've seen enough from this guy, I, I'm not convinced that it's intellectual. That, that, uh, here, let me word it this way. I don't think he's being intellectually honest. Again, and that's because I've seen enough from him. Uh, you know, if somebody just makes a, makes a boo-boo, makes an accidental mistake, that's one thing. But when when you say false things that are provably untrue, and then people point it out, and then you just continue to say the same stuff over and over and over again, like that's the point where I start to lose some respect. That that's the point. Um, and and so here's what he tweeted out: I want to know if the XRP army has realized they are on the wrong side. XRP is not decentralized and costs money to have an account. Bitcoin account is free. So like. To be clear, what he's talking about here is that there's a reserve fee to start an XRP account. And upon reading this, I just was like, oh, face palm, audible sigh, all that jazz. Because first of all, the reason that there's a reserve is so that you can't spam the XRP ledger. You can't spam the network. 
Like with DDoS style attacks, you know? Uh, because if you're going to, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Because the reserve, mind you, yes, to start an account, it doesn't cost that much at current XRP prices. That That's true. It's it's not that much. And also, there's also, very recently, and I reported on this, a reduction in the, the reserve amount, which is awesome. It's voted on and passed. But uh, it costs a little bit. And if you want to spam the network, it's going to cost you a fortune because you need to open a ton of accounts you need to spam, right? Uh, and, and so Bitcoin, it doesn't have this problem. You know why Bitcoin doesn't have this problem, though? is because Bitcoin already costs so damn much that it, without it being programmed in a, a reserve, like, if, if you want to spam the Bitcoin network, it's already freaking slow. And, and then you see uh, the, you know, individual transaction fees just skyrocket. That's the reason it's not a problem. It's slow, cunk, clunky, archaic, archaic uh, software. And that's the reason. But XRP is so blazing fast that we're like, the, 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 the creators of it recognized we need to do something about this. Because it's so fast, it's so superior to Bitcoin, frankly, that if you don't have something to prevent DDoS attacks that, that you know, having to do with financial costs, uh, you're going to have a problem, right? So they plugged it in. Otherwise, transactions on the XRP ledger just as easily could have been free. It's to prevent the bad people from destroying the network. That's it. He doesn't seem to get that. And he's been in Bitcoin for like a decade, apparently. What? And that's, it's, it's just, he's been corrected so many times. And so this is where Ripple employee Matt Hamilton jumps in. He says, you keep spouting this nonsense. I understand you do it for attention, but for the sake of the people that don't realize your dishonesty. The XRP ledger is decentralized. Yes, you need to pay a 10 XRP deposit on your account, but that is still less than the cost of of a Bitcoin transaction or two. Exactly, I'm gonna heart that right now. Why have I not hearted that yet? I kinda wish there was a like a little thumbs down button on Twitter messages right now, because I'm certainly not hitting the heart, but I would love to do a little thumbs down action on DaVinci Jeremy's uh, comment here, because he's not serving the people. This is not intellectual honesty. I don't know why he hates XRP. I can't get into his mind. He it's, He's ideologically opposed to it, it seems, B but it's not grounded in reality. That's the problem. And so then somebody else jumped in here named Macro Strategy who wrote, XRP's primary function is to serve as a cross-border payment solution, right? Why wouldn't stable coins work better for this long term? If the purpose of the token is just a quick transfer of funds, wouldn't one of the stable coins better serve that purpose? And, and so like my response to that is clear. As, as far as XRP's primary function, there is no primary function. Uh, the most popular well-known function is XRP as a bridge currency. Fine, I'll cede that point. But XRP you can XRP can be used by whatever anyone wants to use it for. And stable coins better than XRP as a bridge? No. Like people don't think through. It's like they have this initial idea, but they don't engage in critical thinking even internally with themselves and think, okay, what's the next step? How would this work? That's that's a reasonable next step, right? Like, okay, I have this idea. Stable coins better than XRP. Because and then there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. So here's a few questions. Okay, so stablecoin's going to do this. You don't need XRP. Okay, uh, what company is going to implement uh, the, the, the the messaging portion because uh, of the transaction, these global cross-border transactions? Because again, that, that's what RippleNet is to start with. Even without XRP, it's messaging, communicating with other people, or other entities rather, on the platform, remittance firms, banks, etc. Okay, so who's going to create that software to do the messaging? What's the business model? How does it become profitable? Who's the customer support team? And then the people onboarding these customers, if you're going to, especially if you're going to plug in a cryptocurrency, like what's the sales pitch? How do you how do you afford the sales team? What's the message? How are they going out to acquire customers? How are they going to get those customers away from Swift? I, I, and with that, people don't even think about that. Like a company, somebody has to do this stuff. They just think magically it's just going to occur without any sort of software. And things go wrong with technology. Where's the customer support? Like, who's doing this? Well, the answer is nobody. And so these these people that think that stable coins, they're going to take over XRP for this use case because reasons they haven't thought through it. Matt Hamilton, Ripple employee, responds with the following. Think about it. What is a stable coin stable against? A fiat currency, right? Say the United States dollar. So why would someone in Thailand want to use United States dollars to transact with someone in Philippines? What is the coin stable against for them? Why be beholden to the United States? Which is a fair enough point here. It's, you know, stable coin is only stable, like, basically to itself. Like, against what, though? You know? Because <laughs> uh, the, the, you gotta understand, 
there's price action for every asset on the freaking planet. And so like, I don't even think people have thought past that either. Beyond what I stated, Matt, Matt Hamilton, his point's not lost on me. It's a rather salient point. The price that will, people are willing to pay for anything relative to any other asset or any currency, any fiat currency, it's always moving. It's always changing. Even if the volatility isn't that great, it's still changing. And then what about the trust concerns on top of all that? And so Macker Strategy responded with the following. I'm not an advocate of fiat or the United States dollar, but it is much less volatile than any crypto. So if they are strictly looking for payment rails, wouldn't lack of volatility be important? If they are looking for a store of value, most XRP advocates admit Bitcoin is a store of value if nothing else. Ah, yes, the volatility problem. Well, I'm not going to read this article. I've covered it many times before, but I'm going to highlight it because this, this person has their opinion, but is lacking information. Here is a Ripple Insights uh, piece. This is the uh, Ripple's official blog series. This is from October 31st, 2019, almost two years ago, and it's titled, Do the Math. XRP is one-tenth as volatile as fiat for cross-border transactions. And so I'll just sum this up very briefly. I'm not going to read this. It's on your screen. I'm not going to read it. But what they ultimately point out is that although, yes, XRP, like any cryptocurrency, much more volatile than just about any fiat currency on the planet, uh, when you're talking about settlement time in three to five seconds, the amount of volatility in any three to five second period is less than if you're looking at the volatility of a fiat currency over a number of days. Because you can think about how long it takes SWIFT transactions to complete, not just with the payments portion, but with settlement, the finality of it. And it could be several days, for example. So when you consider a less volatile asset over a longer period of time versus a more volatile asset over a very short period of time, it's actually more risky to utilize the fiat currency. That's the truth. And they break down that. Like you can figure this all out right here. And so that individual is missing that information. Uh, and so uh, Matt Hamilton, Ripple employee, responded with the following. XRP payments settle in three seconds. How much volatility are you expecting in that time? With fiat, you need pre-funded accounts. So you are already taking on a far bigger volatility risk with parked funds. Golf clap for Matt Hamilton, everybody. Indeed, this is true. I'm willing to bet Macro Strategy here is not aware of what a Nostro account is. Uh, and then somebody, Andy, jumps in here and says, so we just going to ignore the Lightning Network, question mark. Also, why would anyone hold XRP if it's just a transfer mechanism, LOL? Uh, let me pause right there. And actually, there is one thing I realized in the last comment. It meant it brought up Bitcoin as a store of value. He said, uh, most XRP advocates admit Bitcoin is a store of value of nothing else. Yeah, so any cryptocurrency in addition to solving whatever problem that's solving, assuming it is solving a problem, XRP is, most cryptocurrencies aren't. Uh, XRP, like if people see that a cryptocurrency is useful for something, then if they want to diversify into this asset class, the cryptocurrency asset class, and they know that XRP is functionally useful, and that means that businesses need it in order for uh, their business models to exist, might they feel safer investing in XRP as a store of value? Uh, rather than Bitcoin, which doesn't do anything else. Not, and I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to go away. It might, but I'm, oh, well, I'm not saying it is. The only reason I say this is because it hasn't been tested in a world where utility has actually taken hold in terms of crypto. So it hasn't been tested in that regard, which is a key thing. It needs to be tested. Maybe it just stays around. It could uh, just because it's the standard. It's the first people like standards. I get that. That's that's part of human nature. So I do acknowledge Bitcoin could just be here forever. I'm just acknowledging also, I don't know for sure. I don't want it to go away. I'd prefer it not. It might. I don't know. I just don't know. But with XRP, as long as it's solving a problem, it would get that store of value in addition to the to uh, the, the fact that it's solving a problem. Any crypto that solves a problem will also get that additional use case of store of value. And so then when this guy Andy writes, uh, also, why would anyone hold XRP if it's just a transfer mechanism, LOL? Uh, he seems very confident and he's laughing because he thinks Matt Hamilton is that wrong and ridiculous. And I'm sitting here basically chuckling to myself, recognizing that you don't understand why people are putting money in this damn asset class. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of speculation, but like I just cited, it's like it, just what I said. People will put money into an asset, if they, a crypto asset, if it's solving problems for real people. That's a reason that I, as an investor, have confidence. Anything that's solving a real problem, I believe, will attract money. It doesn't mean that I need to use it for the particular use case or use cases that are attracting businesses to it and the reason that they're building business models. It doesn't mean that. I don't have to do that. You know, other businesses are holding it because they're liquidity pools and they count it. So they want to make money on the transactions. I get it. Like I'm talking cryptocurrency exchanges specifically. That's part of their damn business model. For me, I don't care about that. Per not on a personal level. 
I don't give a damn about that. You know, I just want to put money into it because I believe more money is going to call it, come in to the space because it's solving a problem. How does this guy not get such a simple and powerful concept? And he's LOLing about it. No. And then Matt Hamilton responds. Why would I ignore it? And he's referencing Lightning Network. Get back to me when the Lightning Network can settle a transaction in three seconds. Why hold XRP? Why hold Bitcoin? Why hold anything? Exactly. Point well taken. And think about this. Lightning Network settling in three seconds. We're talking about XRP settling in three seconds on, on, on the core level. The layer one technology. Uh, Bitcoin absolutely cannot. And so Andy responds. Lightning takes one to three seconds. You hold Bitcoin because it's fixed Monetary schedule, non-corruptible. He misspelled corruptible, but we'll forgive that. Uh, XRP has 20% inflation, <laughs> controlled by people, same as fiat. I do wonder what future you would want. A future to make you rich or a future where no man controls monetary schedule. That's literally not true. Where is this guy getting this crap? Where is this guy getting this crap? Uh, XRP is deflationary. I don't know where the 20% came in, but XRP is deflationary quite literally. With every single transaction, a little bit of it gets, it gets shredded. And so Matt Hamilton responded with the following. Lightning takes one to three seconds to make a payment. Now do settlement an hour. Nice try. XRP has no inflation. It is deflationary. I want a future with more equitable and level financial system. Uh, and so hopefully everybody understands the difference between payment and settlement at this point. Um, one of my favorite explanations of this I, I like to give, I, I actually got from David Schwartz some years ago. And uh, he was he was basically referencing credit card transactions. He's like, okay, so when you use your credit card and you pay for something, you you consider that everything's done, right? If, if you're the user of it, you've paid for it, you walk out the store with your groceries or whatever it is. If you're a Bitcoin maxi troll, you go into Walmart, you buy your room temperature cottage cheese, and then you just you pay for it, and then you walk out, and you think, okay, the transaction's completely finished at this point, right? Well, not really, though, because you still need to pay your, uh, your credit card company, and then they still need to pay the merchant. And so the fact that there's a transaction that happened, that's not actually, you're not actually moving money at that point. You're saying, hey, and I know the average person doesn't know this, but you're plugging the credit card in. That, that's the messaging portion. You're saying, hey, I want to do this. I'm good for this. This is credit. Uh, the money will come to you later, but here's you letting me, like, I'm good for it. I'm doing this. I want to, I'm going to take the product. I'm going to take my room temperature cottage cheese. And I'm going to nom, nom, nom on it because I'm a freaking Bitcoin maxi troll and I like weird stuff to be in my mouth. There's probably a better way to say that. And it, you, you, <laughs> the hell is the Moon Nambo channel? Like, what is the Moon Nambo channel? It's... <laughs> But, but but anyways, like that's the messaging of it. The settlement is, again, when the money actually moves, which is separate. And so with Lightning, one to three seconds, you're talking about messaging here, as Matt Hamilton points out. And then somebody else jumps in named Vashtian. And uh, to this individual's credit, <clears throat> uh, although wrong off the bat here, uh, seems to <clears throat> have taken actual information and then admit uh, admitted that this is it, wrong. It's like credit words do. Like that's the right way to go about things. You know, I don't want to keep pretending I'm right if I'm proven to be wrong. You know? So I like that. So anyway, this guy wrote, XRP is not deflationary. Are you nuts? I hold XRP and I'm not even that delusional. And so that was a bit a bit of a strong statement there for somebody who you'll see it ends up admitting that he's incorrect. A little bit strong, but okay. Matt Hamilton then says XRP is deflationary. 100 billion was created at the start and no more can be created. A small amount is burned with every transaction. It is therefore slightly deflationary. And then Vashtian wrote, okay, sorry, I'll reword. It's deflationary technically. It doesn't burn enough to make a difference at all. Uh, okay, look, I'll cede the point that the amount that's burned is so minimal that it doesn't make that much of a difference. But who cares? The point is it's not inflationary. It is literally deflationary. And so what? I just don't want it to be inflationary. I don't care. It's not It's. It's not money. It, it, it doesn't fuck, it, it, it freaking matter. Uh, and then Matt Hamilton wrote, read the context. The original claim was that it had a 20% inflation rate. In comparison to that, it's deflationary. And then uh, Vashtian wrote, Oh, my bad, you're right. Sorry, I didn't see the 20% inflation comment. So there you go. At least a little bit of intellectually honest, uh, intellectual honesty there while still absolutely being incorrect. And so there you go. I I'll tell you what, just seeing people debate on, on Twitter is one of my favorite things. Like, even when I was brand new in the space, that's how I learned so much because when I, I came in as a blank slate, just like you and everybody else, I just wanted to believe whatever was true. I didn't want something to be true or not true. It was just whatever was the case. I wanted to know that so I could believe that. And and so watching people 
uh, that were Bitcoin maxi trolls and XRP haters debate people that were pro XRP. It was very informative to see who was intellectually honest and who wasn't and who had the facts on their side. It became very clear rather, rather quickly. And so I, I've, I've always loved these back and forth. Like Twitter, for what it is, I understand it's a cesspool, but damn, like it really helped me in particular in my earliest days in crypto. It really did, and I very sincerely mean that. Because I, I just wanted to believe the truth, and what a great place to go where you can just have the sharing, open, honest sharing of ideas, and just whoever's right's right. And yes, it's difficult with the character limitations, this or that, and I understand it, it can be very toxic, but it was still very useful for me personally and so i love going back and doing stuff like this where now that i know what's true i can chime in and share it on my channel so let me know what you think but uh i have a good time following this stuff i really do i'm not a financial advisor you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that i say or write that would be a very 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 bad idea until next time to the moon nambo